It's my feel-good breakfast show. Good morning and welcome to the Culinary Hotline Bling! <laughs> This morning is a very special morning. I've got one of my favorite people in the kitchen this morning, and she's going to be giving us a how-to on Diwali, which is happening this Sunday. So very excited. Please, can we welcome Yashna to the kitchen? <laughs> Hi. Very, very, very excited to have you in the kitchen Thank this you. morning. I'm actually spending Diwali with you and your yes, family. Yes, Megan you and I are. are joining you. Yes. It's my first ever Diwali. Ever, I feel really <laughs> bad. So, besides cooking and learning about all the amazing food that's going to be, we can expect on su on Sunday, I also want to go through some do's and don'ts for people that are going to be having their first Diwali. Um. We're going to go. We're going to go through all of that. And South Africa, if you have any questions for us this morning on anything Diwali re related or anything foodie related, please send us a voice note through WhatsApp. And the magic number is zero six three four zero eight double eight six three. Very excited. Yes, now let's start cooking because I'm so excited. I'm seeing all my favorite things. So let's stop. But let's, let's swap. I'm let's ready. Swap. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm because ready. We, the reason we're going to swap is because I don't want you to get anything on your outfit this morning. Thank you for making the effort. Thank you. Thank you. Diwali me. has come early for me, basically. And I love it. I love it. So okay, I'm going to get the heat on. What is our okay. first dish that we're so making? The first thing we're going to make is actually a two ingredient naan. Mm -hmm. um, super easy, super quick. Um, because I won't lie, but roti is not the easiest thing to make. As much as everyone, all the mothers will tell you, um, it's, it's really, really difficult. It's so. a labor of love. I, <laughs> uh, but also, it's just a la it's some labor. There's some labor involved. There's, and the rolling skills, it takes, it takes a bit. So the two-ingredient naan, you can either use self-raising flour or you can use normal flour mm -hmm. with um, baking soda and then Greek yogurt and your salt. Nice. And that's kind of it. So okay, so I'm, let me, I'm, let me do, actually, can I ask I'll, you a favor? If yes. I, I, this is a, this is a non-messy one. <laughs> if you can just mix the yogurt into the flour and all the ingredients and I will I can start rolling that. that out. Talk to me about the curry. What curry I are we making? Do. So we are doing a lamb curry and it's one of my favorite recipes, honestly. Um, and I use the spices that my mom actually careers to me from KZN. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this because I feel like the magic lays in the spices. It 100% does. Okay. I and have I... struggled to get uh, this here uh, in Cape Town. Cape Town do better. Here. Cape Town do better. <laughs> Give us better spice supply if we want the, we want the real stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the spices. Also, by the way, the fact that they're in the Tupperware. Then you, if someone comes to you with, your, <laughs> with spices in the Tupperware, can you, can you smell it though? Can you, you smell can. it? It's so oh. good, right? Wow, okay, so let's talk through the, what's in the Tupperware at the moment. So this is Kashmiri masala, mm -hmm. and that is a Ramba Rossi masala. So they're very specific, and usually when I make the curry, I would mix a bit. So I would use four teaspoons of that and four teaspoons of that. It just depends on how hot you can yeah. handle. So the heat is, is the heat coming from the Kashmiri? The heat is coming from both from of both. those. This is garam masala. Okay, so, and that's your special blend? No, I mean, I'm just, of course. I can't make spices from scratch. Your mom. It's my mom. You know what? How long will, how long will it take us to fly Yashna's mom down to your cave town? No, okay. So, okay, and Kashmiri also gives us a beautiful color, right? 100%. That's okay. what adds the, the oomph. The oomph. The oomph. So we're using lamb knuckles, love yes. that. Can, are we browning that or first? We're doing onions first. Onions so first. we do onions first, and then we do the cinnamon stick. There you go. I mean, and then... I've also found that in Indian cuisine, a lot of the times you're not browning the meat you before. You don't. And I, I also understand that when you look at the meat after it's cooked, it looks a lot more silky and a lot more the way it falls off the bone. Yes. And I think that comes from not browning it not, before the time. So it's basically about building your spice blend mm -hmm. at, at the base. Um, your onions, your curry leaf, um, your cinnamon sticks, your methi seeds. Oh, I think the English word for methi seeds is fenugreek. Yeah. <laughs> and it's over... Yeah. Haha. Yes. So I'm gonna be very honest with you. My I always look at it and I'm like, fenugreek, I know you belong in so many Indian inspired dishes. <laughs> I've never used it. I either buy it ground up, but apparently this is the this, best way. And you fry it now with your onions. Because it's, it's so hard, right? But you won't even notice it in the curry. Does it go soft? It goes super soft. It forms part of the gravy. Okay. And so... how much are we using? So I think you use about a, a teaspoon or so, to okay. be honest. My so mom this, has yeah. never given me exact quantities of things. You kind of figure things out and you measure with your heart. But <laughs> I, I, I find like that's a lot of like, 
the traditional South African yes, recipes. Yes, yes. And then it'll be like that brown cup that you had back in the day, four of those brown cups. But now you don't have a brown cup. And that, <laughs> but that, that actually responsibility falls on us to like rewrite those recipes yes. and make sure that they live on forever. So, so I love those recipes. Even when I asked my mom, I was like, Mom, can you just give me the quantities of what? She was like, I think you're going to have to phone your auntie because... <laughs> I, I don't have the quantities for you. You just need to throw in a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, and feel it. <laughs> and, and feel, feel it. it. And, and, and smell it. So I go. think as you cook more, you kind of get a feel for what the curry looks like and smells like, and then you're like, I'm on the right track. It becomes like mental, yes. like, like memory, like muscle memory, but like when it comes to food. I love that. Okay, fenugreek ink, what is the... I know that we would normally cook our onions to the point where they're a little translucent. Yes, yes, but we're going to fast yes. forward. What goes in next? And then afterwards, you start adding in your spices. Okay. Talk to me, what's first? So, you can add in one teaspoon of the turmeric. I guess that's your turmeric. One teaspoon? Yes. Cool. You need to add in your garam masala. How much? What would your mom say? Uh, <laughs> I would say two teaspoons of that. Two teaspoons of that? Yes. We need to add in, um, I think that's dania powder. This smells like, yeah, it's dania. Yes. Another teaspoon? Yes. And then four teaspoons, so maybe about a tablespoon and a bit of that, and a tablespoon and a bit of that. Ooh. I hope everyone can handle spice. <laughs> we can handle spice in this kitchen. Okay, that's looking good, it's smelling amazing. So we, the purpose now is to toast these beautiful spices yes. and add more oil. Yes, Because yes. people also get like, quite like iffy about oil in curries. It's so important. It's so important. And I would rather choose to add the oil into the spices because it helps it create the base than adding water. I feel like water waters down your curry and Literally, you don't want yeah. that. The, uh, that is the last thing you will add. So water, here's the thing that I've learned. Water carries color, oil, fat, carries flavor. Yes. So definitely You're 100% don't lack, skip on that all part. And you then know, now is when you would add your meat. Now we add the your meat. meat. Your okay, meat. I'm gonna be a little cheeky, right? So <laughs> I, wanted to add, I wanted to add more oil to it. Not, it's not part of your recipe. No, oh, no. Oh, Yashna's mom's <laughs> coming for me. Can I add a little bit of ghee? Because I, I wanted to add more fat to it. You can 100% add ghee. I think ghee, um, over the Wali time, we use a lot of it because mm -hmm. we use it in our baking. And we also use it um, in some cooking if you want your food a lot more richer, um, a lot more flavorful. So ghee is definitely, go ahead. You She's got the cool. approval. You got the stamp There we go. Approval. There we go. Okay, <laughs> cool. And that's going in. And again, also, when I cook steaks at home, I cook it in ghee because butter gives you amazing flavor, basically ghee being clarified butter. Yes. It doesn't burn. So cook your steaks this festive season. We're only cooking with ghee, okay? Calories? What? No, it's the festive season, right? <laughs> ghee for everything. This is looking and smelling Smells amazing. Good, right? We are, we are going to wrap up a little bit, but when we come back, we're going to show you how we finish this amazing dish Plus the non. Don't get away. We'll be back with more color out time bling! It's my feel good breakfast show. And we're back in the kitchen with part two of the culinary hotline bling! <laughs> ding, ding, ding! This is yes. so exciting. It is, right? <laughs> and we, I, we wake up like this at like quarter to four in the morning. What are you doing according to one one sleeping? Okay, <laughs> so let's talk about this. This is smelling, looking absolutely amazing. Yes. That non dough, super soft, super yes. amazing, comes together so easily. We're going to start rolling soon. Perfect. You spoke about garlic and ginger going in next. Yes, garlic and ginger goes in now, and then that's followed by your yogurt. There we so go. So you're basically building now your curry base. Yogurt, there you go. Yogurt. What happened to the ginger? It's in there. It's mixed. It's, it's mixed. <laughs> okay, in it goes, in it goes. It's always better to use crushed ginger and garlic because um, it just melts more into the curry um, instead of whole. I uh, saw that personal you, preference, personal. I saw that you used a, a microplane or a fine grater because that's super fine and again, you want textures, so you want it to melt in. You want it to melt in. So that's a good way to do that. Where is my wooden spoon? Let me get another, here we go. So I had a bunny chow that you made me. It was so amazing. Could you use this lamb for that bunny chow dish? I know it's got bones in. No, but that's, I love bones in a bunny chow. I me don't too. like, because I feel like bones keep the meat so tender, and that's what the yogurt does as well. So this curry can 100% be used um, for a bunny chow. Oh. <laughs> you know what, also South Africa, if you, put, if you put your stove on, 
<laughs> it does sometimes help when you cook a curry. There we go, stove on. So, okay, so you say yes, with the bones, perfectly fine. It keeps the meat nice and tender, you said. I can also imagine it keeps the meat together in a structural sense as well. So the meat's hanging around there instead and of everything just falling off. And it will still fall off the bone. And you'll have a few pieces here and there, but it's just, it makes the experience so much better. Where do you go, and you, you can say, where do you go in Cape Town for a good bunny chow? I don't... Can't don't do, can do better! I don't do better! Say because I think we make the best bunny chow at home. Uh-huh. Um, so my boyfriend makes a really good uh, mutton curry, and... Um, he does. Yeah. Shout out Cornell. <laughs> Cornell makes a killer curry. And, um, yeah, so in Cape Town, if I go to KZN, best believe I am getting a bunny chow. Okay. Um, my dad's favorite place used to be in Richards Bay. Um, there was a specific place called K&K's, and he would go there every week, every week to get his bunny chow, to get his biryani, to get his fish biryani. Like, it was a staple. Oh, <laughs> sounds absolutely amazing. Okay, so I was about to ask you about etiquette when it comes to eating bunny chows, because they I eat. have no etiquette. They I eat. just, I just, I don't even eat hands. I just go... Never mind. So, let's talk about etiquette when it comes to Diwali, because it's my first Diwali ever. When it comes to gifts, right? Because I already said to you, what can I bring? And you were like, bro, if you bring a crumb, you're in trouble. Because <laughs> you said, there's so much food on the day. There's so much food. I think, like, we already are baking three, four days before Diwali actually mm -hmm. happens. So we're busy preparing sweet meats. We're busy um, getting everything prepped and ready. And for us, it's, it's a really big celebration. So what we tend to do is on the Wali, we give parcels to each other. Okay. So I would put together all my sweetmeats in separate boxes and, and deliver it to family and friends. All right. Unless you're having something at home and then it's kind of a, a takeaway box. Biscuits, chocolates, um, barfi, chana magaj. I know we're going to be making those later. Um, yes. <laughs> so, okay, so I like that. And we are going to be talking about more gifting a little later. So yes. the whole thing you said now, now that I know that you're not... Um, that don't bring any food. Don't you said bring it, any like, food. Bring boxes of chocolate. You also mentioned candles. So Diwali is known as the festival of light. Mm -hmm. So light is very important, especially when it gets darker. What happens is we start lighting little diyas. We call them diyas around the house. So your front doors are open, your windows are open. Um, just don't burn the house down. <laughs> so it's worth saying. I've caught... She's watched our segments. <laughs> my, my outfit has caught a light a few times because I'll walk and the scarf will go over the flame and then uh, there's a hole. No. So, so fire extinguishers are ready. <laughs> at, any, at any Indian event, fire extinguishers are ready in case a sari catches. But you also get the... Um, you don't have to light a dia or a candle. You can also just get the fake ones. Okay. The electronic ones um, that switch on and off battery-powered, nice. um, it still gives the same effect. Some people will decorate the houses with fairy lights. Some people will put lanterns in the front. It, it just depends on, on how much you, how far you want to go. I love it. Okay, so what else, oh, I'm not done with that conversation, but what else goes into the lamb right now? So right now you would need to put in your tom um, potatoes. Mm -hmm. And then you need to make sure those potatoes are well coated in that seasoning. Okay. And you say we can add a, uh, we can add water, but a little bit Just of water. A splash. We're not trying to drown the ingredients. No, we're not. Because okay. we are gonna still add in your tomatoes, which will add to the um, curry. So a touch of water. Touch. Uh, oh. So okay. Was that too much? <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> you're there good. Go. You're good. You're okay, good. have we got someone? Let's see. Have we got someone on the phone? We got oh, actually we got a voice note. Oh. Who is it? Let's hear. Okay, oh. let's just, let's hear the voice note. Good morning, Expresso team. It's Roshni. The tradition that's been passed down is giving back to the community. Diwali is this weekend, and we always get ampers and fireworks packed, and we give it to families in need. And that's been a tradition in our family for generations. I love that. Yes. Also, I like that, you know, she, you, you know, she just woke up, but she's ready to share the message, and I love it. It's all yes. about community, and it's about sharing and embracing community. Very okay, nice. I like that. It's pretty cool. So, and like you said, it's about also sharing those parcels or, like, delicious things, but, yes. again, community. To families in need. Now, can I be that guy after such a meaningful conversation to go to something quite... <laughs> what do I wear? Oh! 
oh, you can wear anything. It's, <laughs> you don't have to. Um, so traditionally, men wear kurta tops uh -huh. and women will wear Punjabis or saris. Um, but if I don't but have if that? If you don't have, that's, that's, it's really okay because a lot of um, Indian fashion now is Indo-Western. So people would mix like a sari top with like a pants or something and rock a skirt. Okay. And, and you're you, good to tell go. I'm excited? <laughs> I, I am can tell. So I'm so excited. excited. Okay. okay. <laughs> and salt. You need your salt. Very important. It doesn't matter how good your spice blend is, if you're not adding enough salt, you're not tasting anything and also keep in mind potatoes suck up salt so yes. you want to compensate for that and you want to make sure you add enough salt and oh i like that what's happened is once i added the water it's come up to a boil yes all the flavors some oils oh, are doing smells so good you're, you're doing a good job i promise well, for a start in the kitchen okay looking looking absolutely good and the whole studio has been saying the smells right now are unreal Yashna, I'm, this is looking absolutely amazing. I'm so excited. I'm seeing someone at the corner of my eye who's made her way into the kitchen. Hi! Hi! You look incredible, but this thing you're making so is much. unbelievable. <laughs> Chef Clem, you've been making us so hungry the whole morning. Is there anything for me to taste? Um, unfortunately not. not this, is, this is, it's, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Okay. And it's going to take quite a little bit of time for that meat to cook yes. down. But yes. Zoe, I promise. Actually, no. By the end of the show. I can wait till the end. I can wait till the end. <laughs> okay. I can but wait I'm, till the end. It, it's smelling it's so smells. good. So good. So oh, good. It's smelling amazing. Oh. Yashna, I love what you are wearing today. Thank you so much, Zoe. Did you, how many of these beautiful outfits do you have? Do you get I'm one? I'm scared to say because <laughs> the cupboard is bursting at the seams there. Oh. Um, but then you also mix and match. So like I was saying, you would wear a sari with a different blouse. You can wear a Punjabi top with a different scarf. So you have hundreds of options. Oh, it's, inf I love it. And why did you choose this one for today? Um, so I am feeling pastel shades recently. Okay. Um, I know Diwali is a lot of bright colors, Bold colors, um, but for me, I'm obsessed with pink, and I chose the duck egg blue. Um, oh. So yeah, for me, I needed to be comfortable, easy, easy to move, because Chef was like, <laughs> Clem was like, you're gonna be cooking, so yes. so just arms need to be. <laughs> and I'm glad they didn't give you the apron, but I see you've been very good with not getting any of this on your beautiful. My outfit. hands, that that's as far as it goes. That's as far as it goes. Don't <laughs> worry, we'll take care of that. Chef Clem, how are things going over there? Amazing. We're about to start frying some naan, so I'm gonna get the heat on for yes. that. I've got one ready to go. I, I'm not as fast, actually, as I thought I would be. But also, the way that the aunties would do that, with, again, and they'd have fat conversations while doing it, not even looking at Don't anything in front of them. Can I help with one? Yes, so yes, you yes. Just so take you it? need to, like, press it down, around, round, 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 and then dip it in a bit of flour. Oh, yeah, so, by the way, Zoe's getting married this weekend. <gasps> what? Getting married this what? weekend? That's yes. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> do you need a lamb curry? <laughs> I would love a lamb curry for breakfast, please. <laughs> so, yeah. I wanted to say also, traditionally, um, we normally have vegetarian food on the Wali. Yes. Um, so, meat is not, like, often made, um, but there are obviously some people in South Africa who do have meat on the Wali. So, even when I was picking to choose, like, lamb curry, it's because it's such a good curry. Okay. Um, but, but traditionally, I know there's a lot of vegetarian that is made um, because it is also a day of prayer. It is. Yes. Yeah. I mean, but how easy would it be to swap the meat, the lamb out with paneer? Super easy, super easy. Um, I think there is a paneer, um, you can buy the paneer ready-made. You don't even have to make your paneer from scratch. So you buy it frozen. I normally pop it in the air fryer and then I would make the curry base and then throw add, in, add the paneer. So you add it to the air fryer to get a little bit of a crush on the outside? Yes. So I do that, but I know not a lot of people do that. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I would have that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That sounds so good. Ah, oh, okay. Don't go anywhere. I promise you in the next part, we will do more cooking than talking. No, actually, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. <laughs> but don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more culinary hotline bling. Ding, ding, ding. ding. <laughs> it's my feel-good breakfast show. And we're back in the kitchen. The temptations are real. It is a Wednesday. It is the culinary hotline bling! <laughs> that was sad. That was sad. I said it's a culinary hotline bling! A <laughs> Little better, but we work on it. Okay, back in the kitchen. Yes. Um, again, the temptations have been real. We've had to shoot people out of the kitchen because they've been wanting and I'm wanting to know what we're making though because it's just amazing. So now we're actually gonna make sweetmeats. Um, okay. So I chose to make barfi because it's relatively easy. 
I feel like anyone can make this. Um, so, do you want to get started? Please, please, please. <laughs> okay. Um, sweet meats are my absolute like. It's my kryptonite. It's my kryptonite. And moving to the to the south from the northern suburbs in Cape Town, different ball game. It's as if I moved <laughs> into like the kingdom of deliciousness. I was sweet meats. And you and I go to the same place. We go to Ryland's for our sweet meats. <laughs> Ryland's Superette is actually where I go to get most of my spices. Um, the, not the ones my mom sends for me. Of course not. No, 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 no. No. The, the, the normal ones. Um, but also, this is kind of, a sweet meat is, is, is easy. It's simple. It's quick. We can do this. It's delicious. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we've got some powdered milk. Uh, Kalim, yes. Yeah, powdered milk, milk, powder. going, milk powder going in. And then you've got your softened butter. W wedding ring off because, hey, you don't want to be losing, you don't want to be losing your wedding ring. Not in the burfi. Not in the burfi. Um, softened butter and uh -huh. then the dessert cream. Cool. Dessert cream going in. So it's very decadent. It is, but th but that's the thing is you, a little goes a long way. How decadent? Of, uh, this decadent. <laughs> Look how thick that cream is. Oh, <laughs> yes. But you said a little bit goes a long way. A little bit goes a long way. So as in eat one block. <laughs> But uh, the temptation to resist is really, really difficult. It is. Oh, so okay. this, you're going to make breadcrumbs. While you're doing that on that side, if I can shift you over, mm -hmm. um, we've got sugar and water to make your syrup here. And you basically leave it on a low flame because you don't, wanna, you don't want it to caramelize. You just want to make a simple syrup. Got you. So the flavors are going with, at the moment, we've got some cardamom, I'm seeing. We've got cardamom and we've got rose water. So as soon as this has sort of formed, the sugar's all melted um, and the heat is super no. low, um, I add in my rose water. So it just adds in a really nice essence. Oh, absolutely. And then um, once you've got good breadcrumbs, how I actually judge it is, the best, firstly, is to put in a food processor because then you get a finer breadcrumb. Okay, so you're looking for fine. Fine. Not what Clem's doing right no. now. No. <laughs> but um, the easiest way I know is if you clump your dough and if it holds together, that's how you know you it's good. Yeah. But but you need to you make it finer. <laughs> keep going. Keep Got going. You. And then when it comes to like modifying flavors, I'm also I'm very cautious before I modify an ingredient that comes from a specific like culture or religion. If you had to tweak this recipe, would it be okay? I mean, it Does would it become be fine. something else? No, so there are various forms of barfi. So there's pistachio barfi, mm -hmm. people will add in nuts. Some people make chocolate barfi, so they'll add in a layer on the top. Um, so you can tweak it a bit. I am, I think, just a bit more traditional. So I, I like it as it is. I'm not changing anything. You're scared of the aunties. <laughs> I'm scared of the they aunties. They will come for me. They will, and with a wooden spoon. <laughs> hey, okay. So, so once you're done there, that goes into the syrup when, okay. it, when it's a good crumb. How are we doing? Like, how's that? How's that? We just it's break not up. bad. This. So also what I do is, if you don't have a food processor, I'll take this and I'll go like this. Oh, oh just to break it up? Just to break it up, kind of things. Is this like a, a job that you could have an assembly line of people for? <laughs> or is this a one-person one job? It's, um, it's a one-person job, but my mom would, would, she would actually give me to dye the almonds. Oh, that that okay. would be my job. Let's talk about the almonds, because they are so beautiful. And we actually made this, we didn't buy it. Can you talk yes. me through how we make it? So you can use diced almonds, you can use slivered almonds. Um, I prefer the slivered almonds mm -hmm. just because they look um, a better on the barfi. Um, and then you kind of put it in a bowl. I'll put a few drops of food coloring. So I think we've got green, blue, red here. Any color, if you just want to do green and, and red, you can do that. Um, and then give it a good mix uh, with your hands, but just use gloves. Oh. <laughs> Please use gloves. <laughs> because that color goes everywhere. And then you kind of leave it aside to um, dry. Cool. Yeah. All right. And then we... your almonds. They look so good. Um, so good, right? Cardamom can I go in now? Cardamom can go in and your ground almonds. And mix, mix again. And mix, mix, mix. And what we're doing now is we're trying to still keep the crumb. Keep the crumb. But, um, yeah, I think you're pretty good to go. That's it. That's it. Pretty good to go. So into the sugar water. So into the syrup. And, and it's kind of a job where you can't walk away. This is where no, you're no, at the No, no, no. You're here. You're paying attention. You are not moving from the kitchen. You're standing for hours. <laughs> for hours? Uh, yeah, well... You're making a few things. And you're never making um, for, like, two... Pe uh, or maybe you are, but, I mean, I feel like when you're making sweet meats, you make enough. You make enough. Um, so, to last you the, the next week. To last you through the winter? <laughs> I mean, you, because you can just... You can multiply this, the, the, the ingredients so easily. You 100% you can. I think your only concern would be the pot, the size of the pot. The size of the pot. But then again... 
<laughs> you know those aunties be rocking the huge bathtub size pots? My auntie actually makes them in batches. Okay. So, so she would make a batch today, she messaged me, she's like, I'm busy making a batch this morning. Um, so just know everybody is already in prep mode for Sunday. I like that. Um, I mean, it's also the chiss around the event then. Then, then Diwali is. becomes like, not just about the day, it's about the week it's leading about the up. Week. Um, I'm really excited for Sunday. Okay, so how do we know right. once that's ready to go into the tin? So you, this should generally, all the syrup should be absorbed into the kalim, and you just kind of keep mixing until it forms a bit of a smoother paste. Okay. Um, so I would keep mixing. I would probably do this for around 15 minutes, um, and I'd spatula and then press and then spatula and then press it's it, it's a labor gotcha. of love for so, sure i feel you so that, la <laughs> that that labor that butter is going to start melting and the that's going to mix with everything yes. making it nice and smooth so when it looks like this oh mind all the crumbs <laughs> when it looks like this we're in a good place and that's when you start decorating that's when you start decorating so this you'll basically take into a pan but if you want to do individual ones you can you can kind of use an ice cream scoop and scoop this out into individual cups little cupcake wrappers little, little cupcake wrappers so it makes it so much easier instead of cutting it if if cutting is okay not your, is not your Shh, I got fair. you so why don't you start decorating I'm gonna finish the one I'll get the ones that we've got on the side is it this no no it's, no it's, it's not this. it's, it's this. not <laughs> I nearly gave away a surprise for later okay we're gonna talk about that later I'm just so gonna leave again it. This doesn't get baked, it just gets set in the fridge. It just get not even. You no. can set it on the counter and then it goes into the fridge after. Oh, look at that! So, we can kind of take some almonds. So, it's best to put the almonds on when it's still warm. Right. Because then your almonds will sink in and, and set. And stick. And stick. So, they're not going to stick right now. So this is where we can go like a little bit like, can we do like dried rose petals, silver leaf, you gold leaf? You could do, gold leaf is huge. Uh -huh. um, normally, my, one of my favorite things to make during the Wali, it's not very traditional, but it's a millionaire's shortbread. Oh yeah? Because it's eggless. And I generally put the layer of dark chocolate on the top and I paint it gold. You, with, I, with, I, with, with wait. gold luster dust and I mix it um, with a little bit of, no, actually I do it dry. And then- With this? It on. Is this? That's normal glitter. Okay, so don't, <laughs> Oh, this is not edible glitter. No, it is. Oh, it is? No, edible glitter. Ooh. Okay, but the luster dust you said is the that different? The luster dust is different. The luster dust is very fine. Fine Got gold. You. I feel like it is worth saying to everyone at home, if you are going to be decorating your sweetmeats and you want to go glittery and shiny, uh, don't use normal glitter. <laughs> use edible glitter, please. I say so because someone actually, I literally went to an event and the person used proper, no, you're lying. proper glitter. Yeah, we were all sparkling, no. but this is beautiful. So I, and it adds a lot of glitz to... I love adding glitter to all my sweetmeats. Oh, Every, I love it. Everything gets gold, luster dust, gets fine glitter. I, I, I feel like it's such an amazing occasion. It, that's the one day you bring out all your gold you and bring silver. It out. Oh, that looks so So good. we can just kind of, I think, put them on here. All right, so we're going to be back. Yashna's not going anywhere, South Africa. She's here for the whole morning. This is <laughs> the Yashna Breakfast Show. Please don't go anywhere. We're back next week with more Culinary Hotline, though. Don't forget to let us know on our socials what you want to see us cook on the show. Yashna, this is not your last time being in the kitchen. We can't wait uh, to have no, you back. No, no, I love it. Um, I'll, I'll happily cook more. Yeah, we go. Um, and no, people behind the camera, can I get the biggest one right now? It's been the Culinary Hotline, bling! Ting, ting, ting! We'll take it, we'll take it. <laughs>